The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. Uh, <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine and a complete line of famous quality food products. serene in the home of the great Gildersleeve. Breakfast is over and the dishes have been washed. The great man has retired to the solitude of his study to balance his checkbook. Outside, the mud of the first thaw is lying as quietly as only mud can lie. And inside... Ooh, confounded vacuum cleaner. How can I think? Well, twelve checks still out. Better get them down here in black and white. Let's see, $25.84 to the coal company, $12.47 to the laundry. Darn cheap pencil. Where's my fountain pen? Nuts. Bertie! Bertie! Can I hear you, Mr. Gilsey? Where's my pen? Yes, Mr. Gilsey? Bertie, did you wash my brown hair ribbon? I can't find it. Bertie! You look in the inkwell? The inkwell? I'll hurry up, sir! I haven't been riding underwater, Bertie. <laughs> Where, Bertie? Bertie, I said I haven't been writing and... What'd you say, Miss Marjorie? <laughs> What'd you say, Bertie? Quiet, confounded. Why does everybody around here have to shout? Anything wrong, Miss Gilsey? No, Bertie, nothing important. Just my checking account. And the way people in this house are always mislaying my things. Oh, I thought you was yelling about your fountain pen. There in your vest. Yeah, Bertie, I was... Vest? Oh, yes, so it is. I knew it was someplace. <laughs> thank you, Bertie. Always glad to help, Mr. Gilsley, especially when you're working on something. Yes, well, thank you, Bertie. All you got to do is say the word, Mr. Gilsley, yes, and I... I drop whatever I'm doing to help out. Uh, very well, Bertie. I appreciate it. Yes, that. sir. Always glad to help. It's all right, Bertie. I'll wear the blue one. I'll get to the brown one off the line in just a minute, Miss Marjorie. Oh, that's why I turned off the vacuum cleaner, Mr. Gilsey, so it'd be quiet for you. Yes, yes. So there wouldn't be any noise. Yes, Bertie. Maybe it'd be better if you just start the vacuum cleaner again, huh? Oh, no, Mr. Gilsey. I'll just go upstairs and do some nice, quiet dusting. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm diplomatic. Let's see now. Check stubs. Where's my fountain pen? Oh, <laughs> in my vest. Now, where do I stand here? 25, 298. What's that for? Oh, Flowers from Miss Fenwick. <laughs> I wonder if I handled her right. <laughs> well, seven dollars and fifteen cents, plus eight fifty, plus the doorbell. <laughs> doorbell. Uh, Bertie, doorbell. Where was I? Oh yeah. Bertie, Marjorie, somebody, can't you hear up there? We're trying to dress, Mr. Gilsey. Oh, all right. They wouldn't answer the door if I was trying on a dress. I mean... Where's Leroy? Oh, uh, hello, Craig. Where's Leroy? Leroy is not in. Where is he? I haven't the slightest idea. That's good. I came to see you. Me? Well, now... Have you got some money? Money? Sure, I'm a salesman. <laughs> well, that's fine, but I'm... Come very... on, buy a magazine prescription. Magazine prescription? Uh, not today, Craig, not today. You don't want one? No, Craig, I'm busy. Uh... Oh, oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. I didn't see you around the porch there. Uh, it's all right, Gilbert. You weren't supposed to. I'm not in the board here. Take the first whack. He won't buy one. Craig. Craig, stop it. He'll buy one. Craig somehow got the idea he wanted to sell magazines, and I'm just taking him on the first call, giving him a few pointers and sales methods. Oh, you do the arm twisting, eh, Bullard? No. <laughs> got the wrong slant on this, Gildersleeve. Boy here is doing a mighty fine thing, building his character. Huh? I believe that every boy should be taught at an early age how to earn a penny. Oh, you're so right, Mr. Bullard. Give a boy a head start in the business world, and you've given him... Uh, 
Well, a head start. Yes, yes, I agree with you. And he's starting out with a good product, Gildersleeve. A magazine that tells you how to fix up your house. Very worthwhile. Only a dollar for six issues. And if he sells 50 subscriptions, he earns his own bicycle at no expense. Uh, No expense, eh? Now, son, dry your eyes and give your sales talk. Go ahead. (laughs) Show him you're a little salesman. Uh, Yeah, so go right ahead, you little salesman. (laughs) Mr. Gildersleeve, do you know how to, uh, uh, I forget, Pa. How to plaster a back porch? Do you know how to build an extra bathroom in a closet? Remember it now, son? Is your barn properly ventilated? That's fine, Craig. Uh, Talented, isn't he? We think so. Yes, yes. The rest of the family will enjoy this magazine, too. Oh? Lots of things in it for the kitchen. And it's got a red cover. Let your customer have a look at the product, Craig. Here, you can take a free look. Uh, All right. Well, uh, the post-war barn and home magazine. (laughs) But, Craig, we haven't got a barn. What do I say now, Pa? Don't get discouraged, son. Mr. Gildersleeve is just making believe he's a hard prospect. Aren't you, Gildersleeve? Uh, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say one dollar, Craig? That's right, and give me back the magazine. No, no, Craig, you deliver the first issue. He keeps that copy. Oh, yeah, yes, here you are, my boy. One dollar. Say thank you, son. But Pop, the instructions said he should thank me. It's a bargain. Oh? Oh, well, I thank you, Craig. Well, goodbye, Gildersleeve. Yes, goodbye. You're welcome, Mr. Gildersleeve. The little tadpole. <laughs> and that Bullard. The old skin flint's got more money than I'll ever have. But you don't see me chasing Leroy out to get a head start in the world. Head start. The post-war barn and home. <laughs> Who'd be silly enough to buy the darn thing? Besides me. <laughs> Uh-huh. Try it again. What was I doing? Oh, yes. Adding up these stubs. Four and three, seven. And ten. Carry to one. Four. That can't be right. And fifteen and three. Confound that doorbell. I'll get it up. Yeah, I think it's the mailman. The mailman. More bills, probably. Is it the mailman, my dear? A package? Well, who could be sending me a valentine this early? <laughs> I'll open it in here, Marjorie. Gosh, it's heavy. Yeah, I'll put it right here, Marjorie, on the desk. Oh, heck, it's for Leroy. Oh, Leroy Forrester, Esquire. Hmm. Who'd be sending him a package anyway? Well, wrapped, too. All the way from New York. Well, we'll just have to wait till Leroy comes home. Yes, we'll just have to wait. Paper's broken here a little bit. <laughs> now, Uncle Mort. Marjorie, it's a lucky thing this got here when it did. Might have fallen apart. Flimsy on this corner, you see. Unky. <laughs> yeah, weak here, too. Oop. <laughs> Tore a little. <laughs> see anything, Unky? No. Confound that boy. Probably been sending in box tops again. Uh-huh. Marjorie, what do you know about this? Oh, he doesn't tell me anything anymore. He says I'm a girl. Yes, yes. I've told him a thousand times not to answer all those ads with free offers. They're never free. Leroy's free chemistry set cost me $7.22. And a hole in the parlor rug. But you certainly had a lot of fun playing with it until you spilled the acid, Uncle Mort. Yes, that's not the point. It's a question of discipline, my dear. Leroy has stuck me for the last time. Oh, Marjorie, out! Leroy, how often have I told you not to... I don't know, I'm sorry. Has the mailman been here? He certainly has. That's what I want to talk to you about, Leroy. Now, if that package... My package? Where is it? Too bad your eyes aren't as good as your lungs. Huh? Oh, my package! Leroy, if you've been answering box tops again, I can no longer afford to go... Leroy! Hey, strong paper, huh? Oh, I don't know. And furthermore, Leroy... Leroy, confounded, I'm talking to you. Go ahead, I'm listening. Leroy, if this is going to cost me... What are those? Magazines. I'm going to sell them. Well, at least... <laughs> Magazines? <laughs> sure. The post-war barn and home. Hmm. <laughs> that sounds perfectly dull to me. That's all you know about it. The ad said people were begging for them. And look, I've got 50 copies. Uh, Leroy. Yeah? 51. <laughs> Yeah, 
Yes, I just bought one from Craig Bullard. Craig, what a dirty guy. He's supposed to be selling women's futures and fashions. We had an agreement written in blood. Yeah, well, nevertheless, he's selling the post-war barn and home, and I bought one from him. Oh, that's a fine way to treat me. I thought at least I could sell one. One? But you have 50 magazines. Where were you planning to sell the other 49? I probably could have sold them. For corn's sake, if my own uncle is going to double-cross me, I might as well give up. Double-cross you? It was unavoidable, my boy. You didn't tell me you were planning to sell magazines. I was just trying to earn a bicycle so I wouldn't have to ask you to buy me a new one. But you have a bicycle. Yeah, but you've stumbled over it so many times it runs sideways. <laughs> All right, I'll buy another post-war barn and home from you if it'll make you feel any better. Now, why don't you get busy and sell the rest of them? I guess I'll have to if I want that bike. Only now that darn little crate has got a head start. It isn't a matter of a head start, my boy. It's a matter of knowing how to sell. Now, you've got to make people want to buy your magazine. Mr. Bullard has the wrong approach entirely. Mr. Bullard? What's he got to do with it? And he was helping Craig get started. Well, gosh, if you'll help me... You've got to learn to stand on your own two feet. Your old uncle's not going to be around forever, you know. Well, if Mr. Bullard can sell Craig's magazines for him, I don't see Mr. Why... Bullard was merely making one call with a boy to give him a few pointers. Craig is a lot smaller than you. Please help me, Uncle Mort. I'm not so big. You're big enough to do this thing alone. Why, when I was your age, I sold at least 100 magazines every week. And I didn't get any bicycles for it, either. Just bunions. <laughs> Gee whiz, with all that experience, you sure could help me. Why should I help you? You wouldn't want to share your bicycle with me after you get it, would you? I would if you weren't so fast. Oh! <laughs> no, I won't help you. Okay, if you want people to say Mr. Bullard does more for his kids than you do. Now, my boy, that isn't true. He's helping Craig sell his magazine. Leroy, you're arguing in a circle. I am not going to peddle the post-war barn and home. <laughs> and I mean it. And so we find the great Gildersleeve helping Leroy to peddle the post-war barn and home. But first, a word from the Kraft Foods Company. My wife and I were talking about food the other day, as we often do, and she made this interesting observation. She said that good meals don't start in the kitchen. They start in the food store. I agree, Mr. Lang. That's why I always look for the friendly label of a tried-and-true food product. Then I know I'm off to the right start in planning my family's meals. And that's one of the reasons we keep suggesting that you look first in your food store for parquet margarine. Today, as always, the familiar craft name on each package of parquet is your assurance of quality. Only the finest of American farm products are used in making parquet margarine. That's why it's always so delicious on bread, toast, rolls, pancakes, and waffles. Parquet margarine is preferred by millions for its fresh, country-sweet flavor and for the good nourishment it provides so economically. So join the millions who look first when they shop for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. Made by the Kraft Foods Company. And now, back to the great Gildersleeve, who has been coerced into helping his nephew Leroy sell that timely publication, the post-war Barn and Home magazine. Our two salesmen have split forces, each carrying 25 sample copies, and Gildersleeve, oddly enough, is warming up to his task like an old fire horse at the sound of the alarm. Selling magazines. <laughs> Haven't done this since I was a kid. Well, I'm older now. Ought to be a cinch. Let's see. Who'll be the lucky sucker to get the first subscription? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Afternoon, Peavy. <laughs> if you don't mind my saying so, Mr. Gildersleeve, you look like a cat about to eat a canary. <laughs> well, now, I wouldn't say that. Something I can do for you? 
No, I just thought I'd drop in for a chat, Petey. And so, just what did you want to chat about? <laughs> Petey, what do you think about post-war barns? Well, I really hadn't given them much thought, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, uh, you should, Petey. It's a very topical question at the moment. Well, no, I wouldn't... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I certainly. And what kind of wallpaper should you put in your rumpus room, huh? There's another mighty topical question. I haven't given that much thought, either. Just let me show you something here, Peavy. Uh, beg pardon, Mr. Gildersleeve, but rather a topical question has just occurred to me. Oh, what's that? Whether you're going to shove your elbow in that dusting powder or in those chocolate creams. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I was so interested in what I was saying, I didn't notice. Now as I... New shipment of chocolates, Peavy? They're called Daisy Delights. We have this open box out as a display item. Tops covered with cellophane that allows the customer to see the candy and at the same time keeps it sanitary. Oh, well. <laughs> they look delicious, Peavy. Do you mind if I try this one here? Yeah, well, the cellophane covered... It's coming loose on this corner anyway. Yeah, well, you I... see? Mmm. Mmm. As I'm saying, Peavy, mm, these are new days, new ways. The time to start thinking about mm, delicious candy, Peavy. <laughs> Some of them have what appear to be ground almonds on the top. Almonds, eh? Mm. Which one? These? Mmm. Mmm. Philly and this one, mighty good, too. Yeah. Well, I don't imagine you'd be interested in taking that box home, will you, will you? <laughs> Well, no, Peavy. Have to kind of watch the waistline, you know. <laughs> no, I couldn't hardly return it to the jobber. What'd you say? Maybe I could take that one home to Mrs. Peavy. Why? Is it your anniversary or something? No, I was just wondering what a customer would think if I sold him a box of candy and when he got home there were two pieces missing. Oh, well, I didn't think of that, Peavy. I have a feeling it might cause talk, Mr. Gildersleeve. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you mean. Uh, how much is it? Uh, one dollar, but I don't want you to feel that you have Oh, it. nonsense. Here you are, one dollar. And uh, three cents for the governor. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to absorb the candy, uh, the tax on the candy, but the profit margin is very small. Oh, uh, of course. Yeah. Here you are, Peavy. Three pennies. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert, Shall I wrap it for you? No, oh, that's all right, Peavy. It's much handier this way. Well, uh, you're right. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes? Uh, what was it you were saying about barns in the post-war era? Oh! <laughs> Forgetful. Uh, Peavy, are you interested in the post-war home era? Do you know how to plaster your back porch? Do you know how to build an extra bathroom in the closet? Peavy, is your barn properly ventilated? Well, for goodness sake. Thought-provoking, isn't it? Well, that wasn't exactly what I had in mind. You were talking about the post-war barn and home magazine, aren't you? You bet. The post-war era, in a red cover. Well, now, that's a coincidence. Huh? The distributor left me ten copies last week, and still haven't. Oh. Peavy, you don't mean... I haven't sold a one, Mr. Gildersleeve. She... It's that bad? I suspect the only thing that magazine is good for, Mr. Gildersleeve, is papering your rumpus room if you happen to have one. <laughs> Come on in, grab a chair. I'll be through with this gent in a minute. Oh, take your time, Floyd. I didn't really come in to be worked on. Yeah? As a matter of fact, Floyd, I had sort of hoped to catch you alone. Oh? What's on your mind, Commish? Well, uh, it's about your barbershop, Floyd. Yeah? Improvements I had in mind. Uh, things to increase your business. How about a nice close shave, too, mister? No, just a haircut. Increase my business, huh? How, for instance? Well, you take magazines, Floyd. They're very important to a barbershop. People come in and you're busy. They want something to do, something to read. I got plenty of magazines. Yeah, but just the usual kind that you find any place. There's always a copy of the Barber's Weekly laying around, Commish. The Barber's Weekly? What's wrong with the Barber's Weekly? Had my picture in it six weeks ago. Yes, yes. And you bought 20 copies. 25. I got lots of relatives. <laughs> But, Floyd, you need other publications here in the shop. Something with class in it. Something with a message. Like a massage, mister? No, just a haircut. People ain't interested in messages no more. 
Well, perhaps not, Floyd, but they like to know how to do things. With their hands, I mean. Yeah? Of course they do. For instance, uh, how would you go about putting an extra bathroom in your closet? Uh, frankly, Commish, I'd be in the dark. There, you see? <laughs> Thought-provoking, isn't it? Uh, how for some tonic to top it off, mister? Real oil base? No, just a haircut. Uh, just what's all this leading up to, Commish? Well, as a matter of fact, Floyd, I'm uh, selling magazine subscriptions. <laughs> Helping Leroy, of course. But it's really a very fine publication, Floyd. You could use it. What's the name of this wonderful magazine, Commissioner? Paint the post-war barn and who's it? A barn and home, and it's one of the finest... I already bought one from Leroy. Leroy? Yeah. He shoved it under my nose and said one buck. Oh? And you bought it? Sure, you can't turn a kid down. Well, that's very nice of you, Floyd. Forget it. Yeah, well, thanks anyway, Floyd. I'll, uh... Oh. <laughs> Uh, maybe this gentleman in your chair would like a subscription. No, just a haircut. <laughs> well, Gilday. Good afternoon, Horace. Horace, one buck. The best buy of your life, right under your nose. You expect me to buy it by the smell? <laughs> and it does. Oh? You know what I'm selling? It's all over town. Where's your peddler's license? Peddler's license? It's the law, Gildy. You can't peddle without a license. Who's peddling? What do I want with a peddler's license, you old goat? Well, I'm sorry, Gildy. I'd like to help you, but I can't be an accomplice to anything the least bit questionable. <laughs> Why, you old tightwad, you wouldn't give a drowning man a drink of water. No, but I'm going to give you a piece of free advice, just like I gave Leroy. Leroy? Great Scott, has he been here, too? Beat you by an hour, Gildy. I advised him to concentrate on places where people have time to read, like the firehouse and waiting rooms, the railroad station, and places like that. Places where people loaf around. Well, Horace, those are your feet on your desk. Now, this is no time to be bitter, Gildy. <laughs> I have an idea for you, too. I can hardly wait. Since it's a house and barn magazine, sell it where people are building and where there are farms. Out beyond the city limits. The suburbs. By George, that is an idea, you old goat. Yes, sir, I'll get started on that right away. Yeah. Goodbye, Horace. Remember, Gilday, the best thing for all concerned is for you to get out of town. Right. <laughs> oh, what did he mean by that? <laughs> Why can't they build the suburbs in town? How do you do, madam? Could I interest you in... <laughs> madam, do you know how to plaster your back? <laughs> just can't do it. I can't face another one. Mud. Mud up to my ankles. So Leroy can ride around in luxury on a free bicycle. Confound it all, I ought to plaster his back porch. <laughs> just wait till I get my hands on that taxi! Oh, taxi! Your door. I'll be 275. What? Yes. Oh, all right, it was worth it. Here you are. Oh, thanks. Uh, sorry I can't subscribe to your magazine, but like I say, the wife takes care of them things. Yeah. Oh. My poor feet. I found that Leroy by George when I. Oh, hello there, Mr. Bullard. Uh, walking, I see. Just a little stroll before supper, Gildersleeve. Get it, Georgie? No, I've already had my exercise for the day. Oh? 
Looks like quite a heavy briefcase you're carrying. Um, uh, water bills, Mr. Bullard. Uh, receipts, you know. Oh, I thought perhaps you were helping Leroy. Craig tells me he's been selling magazines, too. Mr. Bullard, rather than sell that magazine, I'd buy Leroy a bicycle. That's the way I figured it, Gildersleeve. Matter of fact, I told Craig as soon as he sold one copy, his little lesson was over. I bought the rest. Huh? Yes, Gildersleeve, you were our first and only customer. <laughs> well, good evening to you. Uh, good evening, Mr. Bullard. <laughs> well, that does it. Leroy will keep on riding his old bicycle and... Oh! <laughs> Why did that darn kid leave his bicycle? Or... Oh, brother. What a mess. Look at those spokes. Now, I've got to get him a new bicycle. <laughs> The great Gildersleeve will be back very shortly. One of the finest compliments we get is praise of parquet margarine's quality. So I'd like to tell you how we earn this praise. In making parquet margarine, Kraft insists on the choicest of farm products. Top-grade skim milk selected for parquet is sweet and fresh, pasteurized, and carefully cultured for flavor. Another product chosen with great care is the highly refined vegetable oil Kraft blends into parquet margarine. And the vitamin A we add to parquet is likewise the finest. Then, having selected these quality ingredients, Kraft applies years of know-how in skillful blending to produce this spread with the fresh, country-sweet flavor millions prefer. That's why you can be sure that every time you ask for parquet, you'll always get the same fine quality. So remember to look first for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine of craft quality. Gosh, Uncle Mort, it sure is nice of you to subscribe to all 50 of those magazines. Uh, the sum of $50 is no sense. Uh, Sock Martin, P. Gildersleeve. There, well, maybe that's cheap for a new bike at that. Sure, and it really only cost you 49 I saw one subscription, remember? I'd rather forget. <laughs> Now all we got to do is fill out this form and mail it with a check. Here it is, Uncle. Yeah. Mm. Uh, whereas. Yes, whereas. Uh, 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 bicycle absolutely free. Uh, 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 that's right, that's right. Fine print, isn't it, Uncle? Always want to read the fine print, Leroy. Uh, let's see. Uh, mail together with this form, properly completed. Uh, in addition to... Wait a minute. In addition to... Something wrong, Uncle? Go. Oh. <laughs> It says here, Leroy, finally, to cover shipping and service charges on your super deluxe skidaway bicycle, comma, please enclose your check for the additional sum of $30. Okay, well, $30. That's cheap. Leroy. The Great Gilded Slave is played by Hal Perry. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Earl Ross is Judge Hooker, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. Stay tuned in now for Duffy's Tavern. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of the Great Gildersleeve. Good night. <laughs> Surprise the family often with delicious homemade ice cream. Yes, it's easy to make rich, velvety smooth ice cream right in your own refrigerator with a new craft product called Frizz. One package of Frizz, F-R-I-Z-Z, makes six generous servings. You simply add water, a little sugar, and freeze according to the directions on the package. Add fruit juices or flavoring for variety. Remember, Frizz contains plenty of fine cream and milk. It's made by a process that retains marvelous freshness of flavor. Ask for it tomorrow. Frizz. Made by Kraft. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.